Hello, how are you? Hello, hello. Hello. I always like messing with these settings. They always change up the way, like, um, the lives look. Hello. We'll keep no filter. How are you guys? I missed you. It's been like, I think it's been a couple weeks. How is everyone? I'm good. I've been living my best life, keeping busy, coaching. I wanted to talk about like the waiting period because that seems kind of like the topic of conversation every time someone has a non-dualism question and I kind of want to talk about it and clarify some of your questions on it. Um, yeah, so I got a few emails these last couple days and I feel like the biggest thing people get confused on is like that timing, the waiting period when you are manifesting or we know you're not manifesting anything, right, with non-dualism. But here's kind of like my two cents about the waiting period. I don't really necessarily believe in a waiting period with non-dualism. And the reason for that is we are already everything. So if we are already everything, what is there to wait on? You get it? I know that concept is a little bit kind of not easy to grasp, especially when you're transitioning from law of assumption to non-dualism. In law of assumption, you're kind of always hammered in that, let me do this to get a result. Let me do this and see how it pans out to see if I get a result, right? And so that, that part kind of trips people up with non-dualism because you're expected your brain is, is still coming from doing things to get something. With non-dualism, it eliminates all of that. Okay, there's no, we're not doing anything to get anything. So there is no waiting period. There is no, let me focus on something and see what happens. No, there's, there's none of that. With non-dualism, it's the concept of oneness. You are everything, point blank, period. It stops and ends there. So the second you were aware of something, of your ego's desire, in that instant moment, you already had it. Because with non-dualism, the fact that you're even aware of that specific thing in and of itself is what created it to be real. Because nothing is real without our awareness. So just the sole fact that you are aware of that thing is what caused it to be real in the first place. And because we know that these things that we are aware of are an extension of us, aka uh, forms of consciousness, we know that they are us. I can't get something that's already me. You, you guys understand? Like, there's no, there's no waiting. It was instant. The instant my awareness was focused on to something that ego desired it was already real because like i explained to you guys before even if you are aware of something in your mind it is the same consciousness that you use to perceive something with your eyes as if it were right in front of you it is the same consciousness it's the same awareness so when you are aware of something in your imagination that is on the same level of realness as something you are perceiving with your eyes. Does that make sense?
I know kind of like the waiting thing is what people get confused on. So it would be correct to say that let's say you're wanting to be aware of a text message from your SP. It would be correct to say that you visualizing the text popping up on your phone in your imagination is the same thing as it happening with your eyes as if it were happening right in front of you okay they're on the same level of realness so you getting that text in imagination is the same thing so if it just happened in your imagination you are not waiting because you already got it so that's kind of like the disconnect I see a lot in non-dualism is that well I can't actually experience it because it's not right in front of me when you do that you're experiencing life um, in duality you're causing that separation there is no separation with non-dualism Just to make sure if you guys understood what I said, can you type the number one, please? Or if you need me to clarify anything, just ask the question. I'm going to start reading stuff from like top to bottom. So if you comment something, I'm going to get to it. Um, but I'm just going to start at the top. I was manifesting a dream partner for marriage and now I'm talking to a guy who seems perfect but a little practical. I want that passionate, emotional bonding that he should feel for me. So create it. You can create it in your imagination. And then the second you create it in your imagination, that's your new person. It's kind of like what I was just explaining, like people accident cause that separation in the reality just because something may feel personal to them that they want. This is not like you're manifesting a cup of coffee or you're manifesting someone to say something specific or for you to see a random colored animal. It's in times with the things that you really really like desire from ego that you really test these things and you see your power so create the person the ideal person that you want in your imagination and know that because you created it in your imagination that immediately right then and there that's who you have and you just keep going back to that person I'm kind of confused. If I already have something the moment I become aware of it, what should be the point of manifesting in physical reality then? So to me, the point of this was to eliminate like that suffering, right? Is to eliminate that, that I have to go chase something. I have to go do something to get something, which is everything you are taught in law of assumption. Now, I'm not going to say that non-dualism is the path for everyone because I know it isn't. And I'm not going to say that law of assumption is. One is not better than the other. But let's go back to law of assumption for a second. It's almost like what in law of assumption is taught as states. The more you dwell in a state, the more you will be, you will bring that state to reality so that's kind of almost what you're doing here but now you have that understanding that this is how i can get there much faster does that make sense i'm manifesting my boyfriend staying I just want you also to intend for me. My creation is finished. Please stay. So I'm gonna say that you don't you don't need. So the, this is my thing with non-dualism, right? I kind of love the freedom that non-dualism non gives. 
So just to reassure you, yes, you can have your SP. You can have them doing whatever it is that you want. You don't need me to affirm for you because that's giving your power away. Which you guys know that I don't always want you to rely on me to, to possess your godly power. That's giving your power away. What I hope to do with this channel and like my videos and stuff is to empower you guys to be self-reliant on like the stuff that I teach you. But going back to your question, um, my boyfriend's staying. Yeah, so the fact that you became aware that he's staying means that it's already done. It's already true. Because that would not have happened if you weren't even aware of it. Does that make sense? I kind of want to give an example. Um, okay, I have kind of like a an example. So I want you guys to think of think of it like, let's say you have a desire, right? So whatever desire that may be, I want you to hold on to that, and we're gonna come back to that. So this world is like visualize or maybe in your head see like an open field an open grassy field now in that open grassy field i want you to also imagine imagine a lot of fog so there is fog covering this whole field you can't see anything now I want your awareness to go on a specific point in that fog. Almost like you were dropping yourself in a point of reference in that fog. Now, when you land in whatever space in that fog, everything that was around that fog, so maybe like a tree or the flowers or like a bush or like a cottage house, Everything that that was in that fog now dissipates because you are now in that selected area. So where you are has now been cleared and everything in that surrounding area is now yours. Does that make sense? Those things automatically became yours because those things are now in your focus. Does that make sense? And there was nothing to do, there was nothing for you to, to build, there was nothing for you to plant, like those trees or those flowers. All you did was put your awareness on that, that area that we couldn't see at first, but now we focused on. And everything in that area like cleared away in, in terms of the fog and now is yours. Because that fog would not have been removed had you not been in that specific area. So the sole fact that you are aware of that area is what cleared the fog and made everything that is now in viewpoint of you that you can perceive yours. That's kind of what like not what non dualism is. Does that make sense? But then also to that, I want to say that even before the fog was removed in that specific particular area, all those things were still yours even before you focused on it. Or like we can also compare it to like if any of you play video games. If you're in a video game and you're playing as a character, you might stand up on like a very high place. And while you're in that high place, you look out into the distance and you don't see the game has loaded up yet in that particular area. But the moment you go near that area that has not been loaded in in the game, everything starts to just come in and like build itself it's not that it was gone it was just that your awareness was not there yet and the fact that your awareness is now there everything just kind of loaded in and you can see like the new buildings you can see the new npcs you can see like the cars the atmosphere the surrounding areas hello hello
What would you say of someone healing certain traumatic wounds and its correlation to non-dualism? I'm currently healing myself, but I'm not sure how I would be using non-dualism with this. Thank you. So when it comes to things like wounds or diseases or things of that nature, um, I would put my focus on me already being healed. So the version of me in my mind that I created that's healed is now who I am right now. I would put my focus on that new person, that new character who isn't suffering with any of those ailments. How to not react to the 3D while using loud assumption to manifest an X back. By going into your 4D and living there as if it has already happened. Because we know that your 3D is just copying your 4D. So you're the one constructing the world around you with your thoughts and your assumptions. Can you give me some tips on maintaining the state? I'm in between jobs and living and savings and investments. Money does come once in a while when I need, but just paid a big bill and I'm sure where it is. Some tips on maintaining the state. For me, one of the one of the biggest things that helped me like kind of relax when it came to like 3D circumstances is just knowing the information on how manifestation works. And that almost is kind of like a comfort to me that I can always just rely on when the 3D is not favorable. Um, I'm in between saving jobs and living in savings. So one of the main things I kind of just want to point out that you should stop saying or focusing on is is that money only comes once in a while because you are commanding, you are giving your world those rules to abide by when it comes to money for you. So stop focusing on money only coming, coming once in a while or sometimes or you having to work hard for money. That's something that you will have to kind of drop if you want to see that change. Like for me, I have this assumption um, and not even an assumption, kind of like that's I, I am everything, I have everything because I that's who I am. I am awareness, I am consciousness. So by default, everything belongs to me. And whatever I want to magnetize is done by my focus. So if I focus only on money coming to me out of thin air or money coming being deposited into my bank account or people giving me money, me finding money or work coming to me, effortlessly that is what i'm going to start experiencing if i have a desire to be approved for something do i believe that i already have it what do i do if i receive an unfavorable response i.e denial yeah so if you have a desire to be approved for something you would just focus on the fact that you are already approved and anything that comes after that is null and void. Your world is not created by what you see. It's not outside in, it's inside out. So what you create is what comes out. What you focus on is what happens. What you focus on is what materializes it. Not outside in it's in out so you just focus your awareness on something being approved and you just stand firm in that you do not allow anything that is unfavorable to shake or make you waver in that decision because you're god here your word is what trump like trumps everything so you just stick to it and you'll start to see things shift 
and then also like don't wait for the three the 3d to shift for you to know that it's done okay it was done way beforehand it was done as soon as you focused on the end result in your imagination it was already done Hello. Is having an identity necessary to manifest something or with only repetition things can manifest? Hmm. I mean, they both work. One is not better than the other. Um, but they both will work. But I think you're coming more from a law of assumption standpoint. For me, um, I like the concept of non-dualism because both those things make me feel like I have to do something to get something, which I don't kind of agree with. I think if I just focus on whatever it is that I want in its end result, then it's already mine because my focus is what made it real. And something else I want to manifest. The good for him, I want to manifest him stop doing drugs because I know that he loves me. This is. So I would say for your situation is, for one, um, start seeing the outcome that you want. It, it With situations like these, they can be kind of tricky only because I understand that we're, we still live a human experience. So when things happen in the 3D, they can be very triggering but try your best as much as possible to only see the outcome that you want in your imagination. It doesn't have to be in your imagination if you can't visualize, but script it, affirm it, just keep going back to the same favorable story that you want because inevitably that is what will be pushed out. So no more after this. I want you to write out or even gossip or even tell people unless you super super like really really ha have to explain the situation you won't tell the story anymore because the more you focus on it the more it expands and becomes um, real so we're not gonna do that anymore so after today you have the ideal version of the person who you love and that's it now I'm not saying don't take care of the things in the 3d to facilitate that outcome i'm just saying when you are thinking about it just think about it favorably and then move on um, continuously with those thoughts the perception of the waiting period came comes from the ego it does Lack is from the ego. There is no waiting period. There is no lack in the God self. To see change, you have to stop identifying. Exactly. There is no waiting period. Ego is the one that believes you're waiting for something. So, even like, I was saying this on my Twitter, that even when ego tries to make me feel like something is not, going well or something is not as I expected to I literally would just stop and say it's funny how I'm pretending like I'm not in control and then that's kind of like enough to snap me out of it which is something that you know ego is always there but you kind of learn to manage it and work around it Hello, hello. Why do the anxiety and doubts suddenly creep up after you've been in the state for so long? 
it could just be ego doesn't feel comfortable there because maybe you're expecting for um something bad to happen so before that could even occur ego is trying to prepare you for the worst but i'm telling you you don't have to listen to those thoughts you don't have to agree with those feelings it's almost like <clears throat> it's almost like ego is giving you suggestions you don't have to take those suggestions if you don't want to like ego will have something to say if i said right now i have a million dollars i have all these things ego wants to tell me regarding that statement now those are suggestions i can either as consciousness choose to agree with those suggestions and in turn um, experience everything that comes with those suggestions aka lack aka things that i don't want aka you know a whole bunch of things in list form that are not ideal to what i want to experience or i could just ignore those things and go with what i believe which is like i'm everything so of course i have it and then that just takes care of that So what should we do? Just stay in the desired state in 4D till it materializes in 3D. Um, let me see. Let me go back to you. Were you the one that asked the non-dualism question? Okay, so I just stay in my imagination because when you when you do the whole 4d 3d thing right going back to law of assumption it kind of it causes that separation again so for me in law of assumption me staying in my imagination you guys will call it the 4d so technically yes that's what i'm doing i'm staying in my imagination because i understand now that there is no separation from my imagination and the physical world there is just one. Whenever I see myself in a different experience than I'm having right now, the inspiration of new action feels so far and like shifting now. I'm having trouble to feel wanting any tips. My suggestion will be just don't do anything at all. If it doesn't feel comfortable, that's kind of like ego making you feel as if though there is something lacking for you to experience something. When in reality, there is nothing you have to do. Just to be. Just being entails you living your day-to-day -day life, knowing that everything is, is yours. Everything is you. If that feels foreign to you, like doing something then just completely stop and dead it there because for me i'm it's kind of like saying what can i do or what game plan can i put together to to experience having my right arm right there's nothing i have to do just be because the, the right arm already exists So with non-dualism, we can experience anything without repetition. Yes. What about impressing our subconscious mind? To be very honest, that sounds too good to be true. Um, and that's fine. It's non-dualism is not for everyone. It's it's kind of like what works for me, being on being with the journey of law of assumption for so long. I understand that non-dualism sort of was like the the end result. Of doing everything in law of assumption it was kind of like my most natural path to in my spiritual journey i kind of don't agree with the whole do things to receive if that makes sense now i'm not saying law of assumption is wrong i'm not saying that whatsoever but i'm just saying it's not for me and if it's not for you you don't have to abide by those kind of like teachings if law of assumption works for you that's completely fine that it'll work for you 
because they're not wrong. But for me personally, I don't believe I have to do anything. Even like with, with like law of assumption, if you were to, um, what was it? Impress your subconscious mind. Something people teach you in, in law of assumption is if that's all you did was repetition to impress your subconscious mind, there's nothing physical you actually have to do to get that desire. It would it would just come to you in the perfect time, in the perfect moment, at the perfect place. With non-dualism, it kind of eliminates all of that. Why do I have to do that whole process to just get to the end result when I can just be there now? Because inevitably, you're doing all these things to get to what non-dualism teaches you. Does that make sense? So if it sounds too good to be true for you, um, then yeah, you don't have to um, go about it in a non-dualism way. Stick to what works for you, which is law of assumption or law of attraction or whatever it is that that is good for you. But for me personally, dualism was kind of like the, the stepping stone that I was looking for, that law of assumption was kind of lacking. SP told me two months ago that he wants to come to my city so we can meet and I have been manifesting ever since and we're not talking much now. I'm tired of waiting. I don't know what to do. So the reason why you're waiting is because you think you're waiting. Just eliminate that whole, just dead that whole thing. Dead the waiting, dead the him not talking to you. Just ignore all that and focus solely on the end result. When you focus solely on the end result, immediately right then and there, it's real. And just keep going back to that. Just keep going back to that. Just keep going back to that. And that's it. I did. I did get a haircut. Yeah, I don't know, like for me, non-dualism just, it, it just is so, 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 like, convenient for me. Like, if I thought I was a lazy manifester before, non-dualism has allowed me to be even lazier in, like, the best way. Like, I just, if we really were to play out this role of God that we always hear with manifesting, why do I have to put any sort of stipulations to that power? Why do I have to wait for my subconscious to be impressed? Why do I have to wait to use a million affirmations for me to get what I want? That's not God. God said, let there be light. He didn't suggest, mm, I might create light. Do you think I should create? No, he made a statement and that was done. And I feel like with non-dualism, it allows you to fully empower yourself with what God actually is. And I don't know, to me, it just, it's like the most amazing thing ever. Hello, hello. I'm also reluctant to find work again specifically in customer service. I had such a bad experience in my last job that I feel like this kind of work is the best I can get and that I must do for it. So, um, I just want to challenge you to try to see beyond what is comfortable because that's the only way you will grow in this type of um, setting with spirituality. These things that you are more comfortable with, the things that you have learned growing up or your life in general are things taught to you by society that are challenged when you come into manifesting. You said that you think this is probably the only way that you can make good money, but that is ego talking because that's not true. You as God 
own everything. The thing is, you allowed yourself to fall trap into what the ego thinks is good for you and you just agreed with it and you kind of co-signed on that. And the fears that ego brings up with that have only intensified those feelings and made them more true to you. But just know that even though that may all feel true or all that may feel like that's the only path, it's really not. And if it's not evident now, it just gets kind of more cleared out the more practice and the more like information you learn about manifesting or I don't know which one you might prefer like a lot of assumption and non-dualism but the more information you kind of have under your wings all those things start to like disassemble and you start to realize that you were even much more powerful than you actually were Hello, hello. I'm reading your guys' um, questions top to bottom, so I'm not ignoring you. I'm just starting at the top and coming, coming down. Hello. The audio is low. Um, let me see. Because right now, I'm live streaming off my iPad. Maybe. Actually, let me see if I can order a mic. Because you're not the first one to tell me that. I want like a wireless mic or something. Okay, I'm gonna bookmark a few. Just so I don't forget, because I know if I turn this off and I don't do this now, I will forget. Um, okay. Alright, I'm sorry if the audio is not the best, but... Um, I will, I will be working on it, so... Stay tuned to the next live. I probably will have the mic. So, but thank you though for letting me know. Knowing it is done and telling myself it is already mine is also affirming. Your non-dualism explanation made me understand law of assumption better actually. There is nothing more to do. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad. When I act within my mind as if it's already done in the 3D, it feels easier, but I'm not sure if that's a way of relying on the 3D or my 4D. Do you mean you go about the situation entirely in your mind? Can you clarify that for me? Hello. And how to start seeing the outcome I want. You can start seeing the outcome you want by going there right now. Literally. So you guys think I'm kidding when I say go in your mind and seeing it there to know that it's done. It's literally as easy as like right now, I'm going to have you guys visualize something. For those who can visualize, I want you to visualize this. I want you to visualize counting out $50,000 from five stacks of 10,000. So you, you see when like the banks have like stacks of money with like the bands on them. So for those of you who don't know for the, I think the $10,000 have like the yellow banding with the words 10,000 across it. So you're going to visualize five stacks of 10,000 with those yellow bands. So I can see myself picking up 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 
50,000. So immediately right now, as I'm counting that in my mind, as I'm visualizing that, that's me actually experiencing $50,000. In that moment, because there is one consciousness and I'm conscious of that $50,000 in my imagination right now as I'm talking to you, that means I right now have $50,000. And that's, that's as easy as I can make it. Because that's all that there is to it. See how fast that was? Okay, and then your next question might be, okay, but my ego is in the way saying that I don't have it. Okay, so with that comes practice. It's the difference between learning to quiet down that ego and agreeing with it. So when ego came in just now saying that, oh, I don't have $50,000 after I imagined it, your next step should be to say, well, I just experienced it in my visualizations. And I know because there's only one consciousness that, yes, I actually did experience it. Thank you for the suggestion, for making me want to believe that I didn't experience it, but I don't need that suggestion. Okay, that suggestion doesn't benefit me whatsoever, so I'm not going to take it. But thank you for ringing your alarms, but right here is not needed. And that's it. And you just keep doing it just like that for any desire that ego may have, and you're done. Basically, you have developed a very strong non-dualistic self-concept, so you did do the work, but more of the umbrella work. Yeah. Because I didn't start off with non-dualism, I started off with law of assumption. But then I came to realize that everything I was doing was to get to what people who do study non-dualism want to be like if i'm doing all these things to get here to who i am now why not just go here now if i know it already exists if i know i'm doing all this to get to this person why not just be this person now right that's kind of like my my brain's way of thinking How to stop waiting for it to show in the 3D by going into your imagination and seeing it there. There's no waiting in imagination because it's instant. I have an interview the day after tomorrow, but I have not studied the questions they will ask I have to be accepted to this job. Any tips? You have the job. For some reason, they liked you and they loved you and you have the job. That's it. That's all you have to do. Either affirm it or visualize it, but just go to the end result. And that's all you have to do. Because your awareness now that you visualize that is what made that real. Do you have a manifestation routine? Um, Not really. But if like you're saying, if I have a desire, like what are the, the steps that I do? I literally just visualize myself experiencing it and then that's it. I go about my day doing whatever it is that I want and that's pretty much all I do. It's not, I don't have like a routine per se. By the way, guys, if you want more like one-on-one -on -one coaching, I still do coaching, whether it be for non-dualism or law of assumption, I still have coaching available. So even if you don't see me post, I still have open availability, conjuredrealm.com, go book. Um, you can pick times and dates there that are convenient. So 
maybe you don't want coaching for today. You have the option to get coaching two weeks from now, a week from now, whenever you want. But I just know I do offer coaching. And what to do or how to react to the 3D. Like, how should I stay in the 4D? What is the 4D? My SP said, forget me and live your life. Plus, he follows girls just to press me and he deleted me. Plus, block. Um, I go more in depth about 3D and 4D stuff in my older videos. They're still up. I haven't deleted them because what you want to learn is law of assumption. So basically, law of assumption is the premise that anything you believe to be true is true. People don't have free will and are controlled by, not controlled, but they live out life based off of what you assume of them. And that goes for literally everything. People, situations, anything that you assume has to be true based off of that assumption. In Law of Assumption, 3D and 4D is um, what you hear often when you are trying to manifest something. So people will say your 3D is everything that you can perceive outside, things that you can touch, hear, um smell all that is considered your 3d so everything basically out here is your 3d and then your 4d is everything in your imagination But I know you wrote quite a few things here, but just to summarize everything, no matter what your situation is, if you're in law of assumption and you want anything to change, just assume a different story. That's it. Don't worry about what they're doing because they don't have free will. Don't worry about who they're talking to because it doesn't matter. The minute you decide something new is the minute things in the background start to shift to go in your favor. So just hold on to that premise and go from there it doesn't matter who said what it doesn't matter what the situation looks like it doesn't matter how far they are or who they're talking to none of that matters those are just circumstances circumstances don't matter so just shift your awareness into something you would prefer to experience and just stay there and continuously loop that until you start to see the shifts because that's all that is necessary. And this is from a law of assumption standpoint. Would you agree that it's healthy to build a stable foundation of beliefs? I think so. Because a lot of the times, like, right, in law of assumption, self-concept is something that is taught that is used to sustain your desires. Something that people oftentimes encounter is they'll use a technique or they'll affirm for like hours and hours. But if you haven't changed your self-concept about a certain thing, for example, money, if you haven't changed your self-concept with money, yes, your desire will happen because you use a technique. But once you're done using those techniques, where is your mind after that desire has come? those are the things you have to worry about because when you work on the self-concept that is what will help you sustain your desires like long term I have a question for you guys. What do you think, where are you currently in your journey with manifesting? Do you guys prefer law of assumption or do you guys love law of attraction or do you guys do non-dualism? I'm just curious. So say you have to revise an exam you never appeared for. How would you do it? I want to 
I want to replicate that exactly. I want to experience passing the exam. So I don't do revision often, but when I did, when I was still in law of assumption and I did do revision, I would always script out what actually took place and just read it over and over again, almost like affirming for the new outcome. And that's, that's all I would do. I would just write out what happened and read it over and over and over. I manifested more money working from home, also manifested working for self, for myself, as soon as soon. I will leave this work from home job. I love that for you because it's possible. You, you don't have to wait for something to happen for your life to get better. You can just assume the position now and that's exactly how it has to work out. When I'm not coaching or like when I don't do my other forms of like, you know, to make money, I have money coming to me out of thin air. Like literally money coming to me out of thin air. Even when I don't want it, it just pops up into my reality because that are now those are now the rules for this for this reality. That's how money comes to me, that's how money interacts with me, and that's how it will always be because that is where my focus is. All right, guys, I'm going to answer one more question. I want to answer something like everyone can benefit from. How do you stop the ego voice about our desires? So this is the thing, right? This is the thing that I came to realize. <clears throat> You're never going to fully get rid of ego. So if that has been your goal since starting your manifestation journey, I need you to stop making that your goal. You will never get rid of the voice of ego. And I'm just like, I have, I don't know anyone who completely has. It's learning how to manage it as good at non-dualism and or manifesting or whatever you want to call it. I am. I can tell you right now that I have not gotten rid of it. You just learn how to manage it so that it doesn't get in the way of things when you're trying to make something happen. <clears throat> But for me, that only came when I really understood like the fundamentals of what creation is. Like when I understood how something is created, how I can experience something. When I understood all those things, it made me realize that, okay, I understand how to make a result happen. Now with ego, <clears throat> it's kind of like an alarm system. When you understand that this alarm system will always be in the background, it's not about completely turning it off. It's about lowering the, vol lowering the volume. So you hear the alarm system, but you know that, well, the alarm system is faulty by nature. So not every desire requires you to have this alarm system in the background um, when you're when you're wanting to manifest something to take into consideration it's not needed it's almost like having like a danger alarm sound for every little thing we know that the alarm system is not always needed because not everything is a dangerous 
thing. So when you understand that not everything is dangerous, right, we understand that ego is being kind of ridiculous. And its services is not needed for every little thing we may desire from ego. Does that make sense? So the faster you understand that you're not going to get rid of ego is the faster you'll get to where you want to go with your desires. The whole point is not to get rid of ego. It's kind of like to just lessen or quiet the voice and work with it. Because when I've manifested thousands of dollars coming to me out of thin air, I still had ego in the background telling me X, Y, Z about money, the things about my past regarding money, like all that is still there. All that noise is still there, okay? But as you ex get more experience with manifesting or non-dualism and law of assumption, you understand that, okay, this voice can exist. These not so good things coming from ego can exist. But then as consciousness and awareness, that's who I really am. I can override those things because I don't have to agree with what ego is saying. I don't have to accept all these things ego is saying. Now, just because the voice is there doesn't mean you automatically failed, which I think a lot of you also kind of come to the conclusion of that you think, oh, just the mere fact that the voice is there means I did something wrong. No, that's kind of like its thing. Like, you don't have to listen to it. You don't have to kind of like agree with what it's kind of saying. Does that make sense? But yeah, that's kind of like what ego, ego's job is to do, but you don't have to agree with it if you don't want to. I hope I kind of explained that in a way you guys could understand, but yeah, I just view ego as like the alarm system. It's the alarm system that we don't need for every situation. And you can, you can fully get everything you want, even with the alarm system there. You just don't, you just learn to not agree with it. It may feel wrong almost because, because it feels like a parent disobeying no it feels like a a child disobeying a parent but once you realize that oh i don't have to take these suggestions then you're free to kind of like do whatever it is that you want so i hope i was able to clarify some of these things for you guys um but yeah, if you need like one-on-one -on -one coaching or if you need more help or if you need just extra assistance with non-dualism or law of assumption, head over to my site, conjuredrealm.com. Book with me. I know you guys like tell me all the time how much you love the coaching I give. So that's not going anywhere. So if you need help, just let me know. Email me. And yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Don't let the ego trick you into thinking you can't have your desires because guess what? You already do. But um, yeah, have an amazing day. You have your desires and happy manifesting.